It started off bad from the beginning for the Georgia Bulldogs when the Texas mascot Bevo went after little Uga in the pregame photo opportunity. Oh, 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 oh my lord! And it didn't get any better. Georgia falling behind 17 to nothing, failing to score in the first half for the first time since their loss to LSU and dropping back-to-back -back games for the first time since October of 2016 with their 28-21 loss to Texas here in the Sugar Bowl. We, we got outplayed. Um, they came ready like they were playing for something, and, 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 and we didn't. We, they came to play, we didn't, period. Uh, we just didn't play well as a team. You know, I had mistakes too, and uh, you know, it's just it's just the team loss. It's like when the team wins, we the team wins, and the team loses, the team loses. We came out, got our physical, and they won the game. Um, I don't think it was a lack of focus. Well, I hope they learn that you better show up to play every game because the teams that you're playing at the end of the year are all capable of topping you. The powerful Georgia offense held in check by the Texas defense. Georgia finishing with just 177 total yards, only 72 on the ground. Shocking for a team with two 1,000-yard rushers. Uh, yeah, we couldn't get it going, and uh, we kind of got behind, so we couldn't run the ball as much, and had to move away to you know passing, and we just couldn't hit our big plays. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of talk around. You know, it's gonna be a lot of talk. We could did, we could did that, but at the end of the day, we should have came in and played our brand of football and played our best game, but we didn't. But I just think you know, uh, at the beginning, they, they game plan really well. Um, they showed us what that game plan was, um, you know, in those first couple drives, but we just couldn't uh, make adjustments uh, quick enough. Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger had the Longhorns offense rolling, 76 yards rushing and three touchdowns. He also passed for 169 yards, coupled with great field position on a couple scoring drives from Georgia's miscues on special teams. I mean, we saw him on film. We expected the quarterback to do what he did. You know, we were trying to figure out ways how to stop him. We didn't obviously do that. Um, for as far as defense, we missed tackles um, and we missed plays that needed to be made. Simple. It's certainly not the way Georgia seniors like Terry Godwin and Natrez Patrick expected or hoped to finish their careers in Athens. And they've bought into what this staff has wanted to do. They've led, they've done the hard things, and uh, they've won a lot of football games. The foundation has been laid. I feel like the, the seniors did a great job of laying that foundation when Kirby first got here and doing things, and I feel like it's just time for the rest of the team to carry on that. The culture of Georgia is becoming something greater than it ever was, and I'm, I think it will continue to do that um, way, way, way beyond when I'm gone. Um, but I was the start of it. And uh, that's big for me. So what's next for Georgia? Well, they'll look ahead to spring practice and, of course, graduate some seniors like Terry Godwin. And we'll see what the future holds for Justin Fields and his future in Athens. Reporting from the Sugar Bowl, Brennan Robertson, WJBF News Channel 6. Well, here's something that may have some folks chatting around the water cooler. National Personal Trainer Awareness Day is today.